Hey everyone, here's Gore's Horror Movie Month number 6, and this time I am reviewing My Soul to Take. Now, I was going to see this yesterday, but uh, something happened and I decided to see Case 39 instead. Now, I saw it finally in 3D, so I get to review it in 3D, and it's the new Wes Craven film. So, when I heard he was directing this, I was like, that's cool, can't wait to see it. Then I saw the trailer, and I'm like, oh, I'm let down already. Then I saw some reviews, which they all said was this movie was terrible, and then I was really let down. So going into this, I was thinking, oh, God, I, I really don't even want to watch anymore. Did I like it? That's the big question. I don't know. Let's get into the review. But before I do, let me say this is still going to be an unedited review. I'm going to keep saying this for all my Gore's Horror Movie Month reviews. This is unedited. So if you want a really, really, like, scripted, great review, go somewhere else. But if you just want a review and you just like uh, when people just be themselves and without a script, then keep on listening because... Uh, I'll tell you right now, that's what I do. So, yeah, let's go on to the... Okay, now the story of my soul to take in 3D starts off in the little, little town of Riverton, where there's a legend, and according to this legend, a serial killer, the Ripper, will return to Riverton to murder the seven children that were born the night he allegedly died. Sixteen years later, after his death... People start to go missing, and obviously these people that are going missing are the seven that were born on the same time he died. And all the teens that know the Ripper to be dead, they all know it. They'll be like, yo, he's dead. What's up? But they do hold the belief that his soul will, is reincarnated into one of their souls. So pretty much when he died and when all seven of them were born, he said, you know what, I'm going to pick one of them. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, I pick you. Uh, he goes in that body and now he's starting to kill. So he's on the rampage again. Only one teenager knows the answer and his name is Adam Bug Hellerman. They call him Bug, whatever. And he was supposed to die on the night where... Uh, uh, the Ripper started to kill. I don't know, I don't, I don't want to spoil why, but it's really not a big twist. But he was supposed to die that night, and pretty much the whole movie is letting you believe that he is the Ripper. And even the trailer was like, oh, you're the Ripper? <laughs> like, are you, do you kill people? So, it, that ain't a spoiler. The trailer says it. And, yeah, that's pretty much the story. Later on, he, he's trying to figure out, is he really the killer? How can I stop myself? Uh, is it someone else or whatever? He's trying to save the people he knows, and yeah. So there you go, there's a story. I thought it was a pretty formulaic story. Not a very great one, but whatever, you know, nothing fantastic, definitely not. So, yeah, let's go on to something else. Like, if I actually liked this film. Now, before I even start, let me just say all the things I liked about it. I will tell you all the things I like, all the pros, and then all the cons. The problem is the acting isn't that bad. I thought because they were all teenagers and stuff, they would be terrible actors. They're all no-names, too. So I really thought it was going to be bad acting. Some of it was bad. A few of the characters were really bad, like the jock guy and the pretty girl. And even the pretty girl wasn't like, oh, I'm so popular and stuff. She even, had, you know, she actually had some character. But, you know, I mean, the jock guy and the leader girl and the assholes, you know, they they're all, it, it was... It was pretty simplistic in that part, in that part. I mean, it's not very different from any other high school horror movie. And, yeah, any horror movie that took place in a high school. And it's not very different. But the acting itself isn't bad. The, the lead guy, he ain't that bad. And the, I guess the lead friend, I would say, the lead, uh, buddy out of all of them, he isn't that bad either. He's actually pretty good. Everybody else, not so great. Uh, but yeah, still, acting wasn't bad. It was okay. It was decent. That's a pro. Uh, also, some of the blood looks pretty cool. I mean, there's not that much. Uh, there is a lot of blood, but there's not much gore. There's a couple of throat slittings, and they look really cool. Like, it doesn't look like a slit throat. It looks like half their freaking neck's just gone. And that's freaking sweet. I mean, I like that. And there's some death scenes that are pretty bland, but still pretty bloody. So if you like blood, then there you go. Also, the movie wasn't really boring. Like, there was some parts where it did bore me, but not enough for me to go, okay, this movie is terrible and it's so freaking boring. Uh, yeah, it wasn't boring. It was entertaining in some parts. There were some parts where it didn't make any sense to apply. It was more comedic stuff, and I was like, cool, that's great. And there were some cheesy parts, which I was like, oh, okay, come on. But really, I was expecting that in a horror film, so it wasn't boring. And I also kind of liked the look of the film. Uh, not the 3D itself, I'll talk about that later. Uh, but I like the look of the film. Uh, it, it doesn't look bad. 
So, yeah, um, let's talk about the cons of the film now. Now, like I said before, the cons, the first one is obviously some of the acting. Some of the acting is really bad. Some of the acting is just blah. Some of the acting is just eh. But most of it is just bad. I'll just say right here, most of it's bad, but not as bad as I thought. So that's like a con, and, you know, it's a con and a pro. You know, pro, half of it was good. Uh, con, well, pro... Three, uh, one fourth of it was good, and con, it was three fourth bad. So, still better than I thought. Uh, so, like I said before, the death scenes are kind of boring. They're not very inventive. They all have to do with a knife, uh, and that's kind of boring. They all have to do with the same freaking knife. Uh, the killer looks ridiculous. I mean, it, he has the stupidest costume I've ever seen. He has a pretty cool knife, I gotta admit. It has the word vengeance on it, but the knife itself looks pretty cool. Uh, and what else? The knife looks cool. The killer itself looks terrible. Uh, hmm, what else? The 3D was really, really bad. I'll just say right here, it's not even worth the three dollars I spent more. I spent twelve bucks on the 3D, and that's a that's that's actually pretty cheap compared to most uh, theaters. Like uh, most theaters, I have to pay seventeen bucks to see in 3D. Yes, seventeen dollars to see a movie in 3D, and a regular ticket's eleven fifty in most theaters. But mine is cool. It's only eight fifty for a regular one and twelve for a 3D ticket, so that's really cool. But the 3D in this is terrible. I'll just say right here, nothing pops out at you. The beginning of the film had one little cool pop-up thing, and something exploded and came to the camera. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Everything else is terrible. Sometimes you you can't even notice there's any 3. 3D going on. You can definitely tell it's a conversion. It's definitely one of the worst looking 3D films I've ever seen. Uh, I haven't seen Clash of the Titans, but I mean, this is really bad. Come on, people. Really? So, overall, I didn't love this film either, just like Case 39. I was expecting much more from Wes Craven. That should be a con in itself. This is Wes Craven. It should be better. But Wes Craven has been taking some really bad uh, decisions lately. If you've seen Cursed, you know what you know what I mean. That movie was freaking horrendous. He didn't write it, though. This movie's not horrendous, like a lot of critics are saying, but it's not uh, good. It's, like I said before, Case 39. It's pretty much like Case 39. Except just a little bit better. Just a little bit better because there was more blood and uh, it was actually, you know, didn't have as many boring parts in it. So, if I had to give it a score, I'd give it a 5.5 out of 10. Not a fantastic movie at all, but it's an okay one. If you have to, go rent it uh, when it comes out, but otherwise, just skip it. So, overall, there goes my review of My Soul to Take. I know it wasn't the greatest review, but sorry, I'm tired. I haven't done anything today and I want to go and do something, so live with it. Anyway, yeah, My Soul to Take. 5.5 out of 10. Not a very good movie. Definitely don't see it in 3D if you have to.